Hello and welcome to the basics on Columbine, an in-depth look at locomotives from the early days of steam. Columbine is the last survivor of a type of locomotive which was once ubiquitous on the London and North Western Railway. Known as the crew type, several hundred of these handy little locomotives were built, but only one, Columbine, entered preservation, and then for the wrong, or perhaps the right reasons. Originally thought to have been the first locomotive built at the famous Crew Works, in fact, she was the 20th. But it's a good thing the error wasn't found out sooner, otherwise she may not exist at all. Her design is traditionally ascribed to a Scottish locomotive engineer, Alexander Allen. But as with Columbine's preservation, this may not be entirely truthful. The origins of what became known as the crew type actually go back to Merseyside, to the Edgehill works of the Grand Junction Railway. The Grand Junction was built to run from Birmingham to a point midway on the old Liverpool and Manchester line, opening in summer 1837, and it did so with a fleet of handsome six-wheel patentee-type locomotives. Because of the very sharp curves linking the Grand Junction to the Liverpool and Manchester, crank axle breakage became a regular and very serious occurrence. All of the 25 patentees on the Grand Junction had broken their crank axles in just 13 months. The board of directors looked to their chief engineer Joseph Locke and his assistant William Barber Boudicom for help. Locke had been trained by George Stevenson and has cut his engineering teeth, so to speak, on the Liverpool and Manchester. Together with Robert Stevenson and Brunel, he formed the great Victorian Engineering Triumvirate. Boudicom was also an alumnus of the Liverpool and Manchester. And it's rather ironic he became a railway engineer as his father, the Reverend Boudicom, who was an Anglican vicar and into Alia a slave owner, but we'll not dwell on that, who was not only opposed to the railways, but also thought Sunday travel to be utterly sinful. So in 1840, Locke and Boudicom set about the task of preventing crank axle failure. The logical solution was to forego crank axles altogether in favour of straight axles and therefore the use of outside cylinders. This was not a new idea as George Forrester of Liverpool had also built outside cylinder locomotives and you can find out more about George Forrester in my video on Vauxhall. And this is where Alexander Allen comes into the story. Allen had been employed by Forrester in Liverpool but in 1840 was appointed as foreman of the Edgehill workshops by Joseph Locke. With the opening of Crewe Works in 1843, he would continue in this capacity as works foreman. But this was a position which Allen would later embellish to being assistant superintendent of the locomotive department or even manager of Crewe Works, both of which are unsubstantiated. In order to assess outside versus inside cylinder locomotives, the Grand Junction purchased two engines from Forrester in summer 1840, but they don't appear to have been successful. The first outside cylinder locomotives built at Edge Hill by Locke and Boudicom were conversions of existing patentees. Locke announced in February 1841 a glorious scheme for straight axles, and a year later, in February 1842, a happy Grand Junction board ordered production to commence with new engines made with straight axles, end quote. Key aspects of the design include double iron frames, with inside bearings for the driving wheels and outside for the carrying wheels, inclined cylinders mounted alongside the smoke box. At first, Boudicom's Gab valve gear was used, later to be replaced by Stevenson Link. But before this order was given to start production of new locomotives, Boudicom had resigned in summer 1841 to work for the Chemin de Fer de Paris à Rouen in France, a line which was being engineered by his old chief, Joseph Locke. In place of Boudicom, Francis Trevithick, the son of the pioneering Richard Trevithick, was placed in charge at Edge Hill, and he continued to develop the designs of Locke and Boudicom. 
the first six outside cylinder locomotives had been built at Edge Hill before crew works opened in summer 1843. This outside cylinder design, which later became known as the crew type, should therefore be properly called the Edge Hill type. This type of locomotive was built both as a 222 passenger engine or as 240 goods engines. Many of them had remarkably long working lives, often losing their tenders and being rebuilt as tank engines, some of them being in service into the 20th century. But what of Columbine? Well, she lasted in frontline LNWR service until 1877, when she was transferred to the engineer's department at Bangor in Gwynedd in North Wales to pull the resident engineer's special saloon, which duties she performed until 1902. Thereafter, she earned an honourable retirement in the paint shop at Crew Works, a beloved relic. But what of Boudicom? Well, together with another Liverpool and Manchester alumnus, the Quaker engineer William Allcard, he established a railway engineering works at Sotteville near Chartreux in France in 1842, and this became one of the most important railway works in France, and it is still in operation. It built large numbers of what were known in France as Budicoms after their designer. But that, of course, is another story. Alexander Allen perpetuated the fake news that he had designed the crew type until the day he died. Having come from Foresters, perhaps he had made the suggestion, why not use outside cylinders? But then again, outside cylinders were a natural and logical choice in order to avoid the use of crank axles. The final design of the locomotives was very different from those perpetuated by Forrester and was down to Locke and Boudicom. So those are the basics on Columbine, a locomotive which would have been scrapped long ago, if not for a happy mistake. If you have enjoyed this video, please support this channel and help it grow by liking, sharing and subscribing. And see you next time on Rail Story.